and see what we got cooking here. Basically, Amazon Web Services is a composite of things that you can do with different components. Um, the thing you want to remember about Amazon Web Services is that it's really component driven. Um, whether you're going to use computers, whether you're going to do monitoring, whether you're going to do access management, um, whether you're actually going to use some of the applications that they built in, workflow, message queue service, push notifications, email, um, whether you want to do storage, or whether you want to actually do databases. So right now what we're doing is we're taking a look at what the Amazon Web Services Management Console actually looks like. Um, we're logged in underneath my account. These are all the web services that I actually am signed up for to use. So Direct Connect, this is more of a VPN solution between point A and point B between your company or your school and Amazon Web Services. EC2, the Elastic Compute Cloud, is basically here's where you get your servers. Elastic MapReduce, um, Hadoop, famous for allowing you to use large data sets. Route 53, which is DNS, uh, virtual private networking, virtual private cloud, basically allows you to go through and build a semi-isolated cloud system. And there's different ways of taking a look at this. Uh, CloudFront, storage and content delivery, CloudFront will allow you to basically put a bastion wherever there is an Amazon data center. Um, Glacier and archive storage, if you want to actually archive things off. S3, which is more of an active storage system. Um, you can put anything you want into S3 and actually use it, and S3 has got some really interesting bits and pieces. Storage Gateway integrates your local company network attached storage with the S3 buckets or the Glacier buckets that are actually back in Amazon. So there's a way of doing this through actually using Direct Connect and using a virtual private network or a virtual private cloud so that everything that's on your network attached storage in your company can also be in the Amazon cloud system which is a really a good idea if you uh, actually want to be able to have online backups of everything that you have on your network attached storage. This can be kind of pricey but it can also be really handy if this is going to be your failover, your backup, or, your dis or part of your disaster preparedness plan. There's various kinds of databases. Dynamo, that's a NoSQL database. ElastiCache, which is an in-memory cache, so you can actually shove stuff into big memory chunks and use it that way. And then RDS, very simple, MySQL, MSSQL, and Oracle. Then you also have deployment and management, CloudFormation. These are things that you can actually make push button and actually be able to just go out and launch all sorts of different kinds of computing that you already template, you already know about. You can use this as part of your management in that in terms of being able to bring up additional resources to service customers, especially if your usage is spiky instead of a more of a continuous flow. CloudWatch, this is all your monitoring and everything else. CloudWatch ties into everything and it can actually spin up and automate a lot of the processes that you've got going inside of your Amazon web system. Um, Elastic Beanstalk, it's an application container. If you've built an app, uh, custom application for what you're doing, um, Elastic Beanstalk can bring things up and bring things down as you need. IAM, Secure Access versus the Access Control. Um, the IAM system is basically a rough tool. It's not a fine grain tool. So in terms of being able to set access, you're fairly limited to what people can do in terms of setting real fine-grained access control to what you've got. Again, this is more of a blunt instrument rather than a precision tool. And then application services, cloud search, you can actually do a search function for the data that you have either in your storage gateway, your S3, or your Glacier. And this makes a huge difference for users in terms of if you're trying to find that weird piece of data that's over in a corner somewhere. Um, but it really gives you a really good search function for your data that you have stored out in storage and content delivery. Um, email, email sending service, uh, some very interesting rules about how not to be spammy with this. Um, SNS, push notification service, basically you can send text messages to your cell phone. This ties in brilliantly with CloudWatch and all of your other management functions. So SNS is actually really good for keeping your, your system administrators abreast of what's going on 
or if you have users that actually do want to you want to be able to push text messages down to your users this would be their basic gateway message queuing service if you need to queue messages and then a workflow service for coordinating application components so kind of an interesting way of looking at it, but these are all the services that you can do if you want to actually have different services there's still more that you can do with this right and these are just the ones that you can set up you can customize your one-click navigation so that, so that you can just go straight to something um, there are a ton of services that you can use that I'm not necessarily signed up for at this point. You sign up for individual services. Think about again that Amazon Web Services is really component driven. You buy bits and pieces and then build them into a framework. So with that in mind, you've really got to kind of keep track of how you do stuff. So again, while I'm signed up for most services, there are still things that are buried in here that will keep things very interesting for you in terms of keeping things going as far as Amazon Web Services are considered. But this is your basic, basic shell, right? This is where you end up. If you wanna actually go in and take a look at your account and see the things that you've actually signed up for, and it wants my password again. All right, you can actually go in and see all the things that you're signed up for you can see the services you're not signed up for. Um, if you want to add all the remaining infrastructure services to your account at once without affecting, you can go ahead and do all this. Support, payments and billing, um, dev pay. Uh, there's also a bunch of other stuff that allows you to do things. So one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna work IAM. So IAM user access to the AWS website. Um, you can actually go in and set up kind of an administration function with this. You can cancel services, cancel your AWS account, or manage any kind of tax exemptions that you may have. You can also go through and check your payment method, right? however you want to do this. You can check your personnel information, make sure that you've got all your stuff set up. Your security credentials, if you need to do access keys, you will be able to do access keys, make new ones. These access credentials are absolutely super important, and I'm probably not really gonna go much into this because once you've got my access key, you can pretty much so do stuff. But you have access key certificates and key pairs, right? So you can download your public and private key pair from here and create new ones. You can upload your own key pair, um, and you can actually go in and see where all the private stuff is. You can create a new certificate, um, especially if you want to do SOAP and other kinds of things. So remember, Amazon does not ask you for your public or private key. They don't keep it on file. Um, you can do other things, set all your stuff up. You can also use multi-factor authentication if you have something from that. And then your account identifiers, you can actually bring up. Um, don't want to bring up that because I don't want you to really know that much about what I'm up to. All right, you can see all the account activity that I've recently done in terms of how I've actually gone through and what services I'm consuming, how much data and all the rest of it. You can kind of see I've only spent 15 cents so far and it's mostly for my simple storage service because I have a whole lot of stuff stored out. I have almost one and a half gigs of just stored out. So it's actually really not too bad in terms of what I'm using here. So my usual AWS is actually pretty quiet. I also have my access and identity. So I actually have people that are in here. So if we go back to my console, right, and we go into my IAM, then we can actually see how we set this up. And that's the next tape in this, is that how do we actually use IAM once we've had this run through with the dashboard?